tell you what. Those propane heaters that you could buy from like Home Depot or whatever, it's just like a fucking Batmobile tube. Those things work, dude. It works. It was cold as shit in here when I walked in here this morning and I turned it on for maybe like five minutes and it's like nice and warm in here now. I'm probably gonna have to kick it back on again a little bit later, but it's good right now. Anyway, figure I'll use this second. Get that beard check, man. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. Look at that. Look, I'm getting that line right there, man. It's clean. It's clean. There's about, there's about 10 hairs right here that are growing in nice. That mustache, man, I swear it's a little thicker in person. It's a little thicker in person. It looks a little thin on camera, but it's a little thicker in person. But right here, man, so we got a nice sweet bald spot right there, dude. Beard's coming in, bro. It's coming in, bro. I'm trying so hard to keep it. Everyone says, bro, just let it grow out. It's gonna fill in. Don't worry about it. You're gonna look stupid at first. But like every single time, man, I just wanna fucking cut it, but I can't. I'm trying to let it grow. I'm trying to be a man about it. I'm trying to grow a beard now. Anyway, the, uh, the garage has been sort of cleaned. It's not like any good. Like, like you can see, <laughs> my weld table's got shit all over it. I've got uh, all the LS parts I pulled out from underneath the workbench over here. And uh, I, got, I got, I don't know, I don't know. I got too much shit, man. I got way too much shit. I keep, cu I'm cussing too much in these. I gotta stop cussing. This is a family friendly show. Um, but anyway, and then I've got my toolbox from my last job. Now, I don't really have space for it, but I'm kind of thinking I've got an idea for it. Um, I worked at a structural steel fabrication shop as we talked in the last one, and that's what I used as like my toolbox. It had like some hand tools in it and other shit like that. But I have my big toolbox, ignore my shit light on top of it. That's what I was just using to illuminate my face. But I have my big toolbox that I inherited from my dad for all my hand tools. So like, I don't need that toolbox for that. So I think what I'm going to do instead is a lot of my fabrication tools, like my squares, my clamps, and all kinds of crap like that, I had just sitting, like either like hanging underneath the, the weld table or like just sitting somewhere in here. I think I'm just gonna fill that toolbox up with all my fab stuff. So like my squares, uh, like you know, these, these clamps right here, I use these for like small tubing. Like I have, I've built some like one inch frames just recently for a buddy of mine and uh, I was using one inch square tubing and I use that to like keep the corners nice and uh, you know, right, like at a 90 degree angle. So I use those to fix straight up and uh, I think I'm gonna just fill that toolbox with all that stuff. So that way I've just got like a dedicated fab box. I could just go up to it, pull the stuff out that I want. Um, and eventually if I ever get a bigger space, which I'm hoping I do at some point, um, I'll just keep that the same thing, like wheel it around the shop. If I need something out of it, I take it out of it and we use it for that. But as you can see down this aisle was a lot more messed up before, but I've since cleaned it and we're good now. I mean, there's walking room. Uh, you know, parts cleaner. This is like a whole detail kit. I bought like an entire rigid case a while back after I bought my truck. And it's got all of the uh, Adams polishes stuff in it. And this is what I used to wash my truck. Well, what it used, I mean, I don't wash my truck nearly as much as I used to. But um, yeah, and then uh, we've got, you know, my sketchy blocks that I had the car up on before the engine hoist is down here and this the media blaster the sand blaster whatever you want to call it uh i got that over here in the corner again i've got more or less parts on that cart i got 8.8 .8, uh the 48.8 parts on this and some ls parts on the shelf below that ls parts on the shelf below that there's some like radiator fans and like oil cooler fans and some harnesses that are like extremely expired so I'm honestly thinking about going through that shelf and like reorganizing it and trying to put as much stuff on that shelf as I can. Um, if not, then like, I don't know, we'll figure it out. But I gotta do that today and I also gotta do an oil change on my truck. So I think that's gonna be today's video is a little bit more organizing. We're gonna do the oil change on the truck. I'll speed through that because everyone's done an oil change, I'm sure, who watches this crap. So we'll speed through that.
we've uh, finished up some cleaning here. And uh, yeah, I'm happy with it. I mean, you can see on the workbench in the background, I have like a bunch of my hand tools I need to put back in the, uh, the big toolbox. Um, but the welding table is cleared off and the, the welders themselves, I used to like hang stuff on my welding cart. Um, I have one of those welding carts from ZT Fab. You guys should go check them out. They make some badass stuff. But I, I have one of those and I used to just hang shit off of it, like all my magnets and everything. But like I said, I put everything, uh, all my like small uh, hand fab tools, like hand fabbing tools, I put in the toolbox. Um, so yeah, that's actually going to be, like, it sucks. I really don't have room for it. But it'll be cool to have it. I mean, I could just wheel it all around. Um, you know, if I need to, I can pull it outside and whatever, and I can have some space. Uh, but eventually, you know, the plan is to get more space um, at some point. Uh, but uh, for right now, uh, it will do well just holding all of the clamps and everything like that. It'll just be really easy access uh, on this one side right here. Uh, I bought this Husky toolbox and it's got like a pegboard on the side. Um, I hang my hood and uh, like a grinding shield on that side. Um, it works out great for that so that way you're not taking up a bunch of space just with your hood and with your like grinding shield and all that kind of stuff. But um, yeah, I filled that up with all my uh, hand tools and all that kind of stuff. I threw like a couple clips in there uh, that you guys seen and then I also threw some clips in of the welding table. This is a Serta flat welding table. Um, it's like weldtables.com or something like that, but they used to like use the term Serta flat all the time. I don't know if they still use that. I mean, I still follow them on their social media platforms, but I, I, like, I don't know what they go by anymore. I feel like they may have changed their name a couple times, but this, uh, this table's sweet, man. Like I've never really talked. I don't think I've talked about it before, but it's pretty sweet. I mean, it's got these holes in it, uh, for fixturing. Like you could buy clamps. I don't remember the size of the holes but anyway like you buy the you could buy the table I bought like I think their smallest one they might have like a two foot by two foot for like just like little stuff but this is a two foot by four foot table uh, and it's just their weld table it's not the fab block or anything like that but uh, these things are pretty sweet man like you could you put the clamps in you could buy the clamps specific for them or you can make your own and uh, it's great for fixturing stuff down. Like I'll show you real quick. This clamp right here, uh, this was like a bent C clamp. Um, I don't know if I ever showed anything about this on the YouTube channel, but this was like an old bent C clamp that I got from a friend. He was just throwing it away. It's a cheap Taiwan Chinese one. It used to be red, but um, it was bent down here at the end, like he, he may have clamped something a little too hard and bent it or whatever. And uh, he was like throwing it away and I was like, well, dude, I'll take it. And uh, I chopped the bottom off of it and welded this little stud on here. And then as you can see, it just slides into the table. And then anything you clamp down, it'll tilt this up and lock it into the table. And uh, it, it's like perfect for fixturing pretty much anything. I used it to fixture the subframe for the Rambler and all that kind of stuff. And I use it all the time for like random customer jobs that I have, like people will come up to me that need something welded, I'll use it all the time for that. So this thing's like really great if you guys are ever in the market for something like this. Um, but uh, with that being said, I mean like it is steel and it just kind of depends on how much you care, but there is like a little bit of maintenance to it and I, even me, I don't even keep up with it that much, <laughs> but um, like when you're done using this after a few uses, you really want to like clean it all off because you get like spot, if you make MIG weld on it, you'll get splatter all over it or stick weld or anything like that, but you'll get splatter all over it. So you really want to get that splatter off so you still have a flat surface to weld on and fixture to. Um, what I do is after every couple uses, um, excuse me, I will use uh, a uh, orbital sander, <laughs> Jesus. I'll use an orbital sander. I've got like a little electric one from Ryobi. I'll use that and with like a 220 pad on it. And sometimes I use like a used 220 pad um, because I don't want it to be like too abrasive, but just enough to where like I can get that layer of crap off of it and like any little balls or anything like that, it'll knock it off. Uh, and then 
give you a nice surface to, to clean up. So what I'll do is I'll use that and I'll just go like up and down the table and then I'll come side to side and I'll do that a couple times until you get like that, that you can see like a slight like finish to it that you, that you sanded back. Uh, it's not taking any material off. Like if you were to use an angle grinder and like a flat disc or something, you could probably like put divots in it and I'm trying to avoid that. So I use that orbital sander to just try and keep a nice flat surface uh, and it'll clean it up and make it nice and smooth again. And then I come through with some PB blaster, just like a regular can of PB blaster. And I'll put like a couple of sprays on the table and just wipe it all off. Uh, that way it'll leave like a nice little film of PB blaster over it, but it's not too much to where like you feel greasy when you're touching the table. It's just enough to keep the surface rust off of it and to keep it nice and clean and ready to weld on. So I just wanted to touch on that. And uh, yeah, I mean, I gotta put some more tools away, but I think we're gonna jump into doing the oil change on the truck. And then I think I'm gonna wrap this video up for today. I use Wix filters in everything that I have. I mean, my wife's car gets Wix filters. All my trucks have gotten white Wix filters. All the cars I've built get Wix filters. I just always use Wix filters. Um, on this truck, it's a cartridge filter. It's one of these bad Johnnies right here. So let's take the old one out, put this one in. Clean the housing out so we're ready to put the new filter. Every new filter comes with a new o ring for this housing. Put a little bit of new oil on that, new oil on that, and send it. I just tried to pour oil into the truck and I was paying attention to the camera because it started beeping that it was dying. Um, I, I, and I spilled oil all over the engine on accident. So I've been frantically trying to clean it up, but I'm gonna fill this up while I charge the battery on this thing because it's dying. All right, as you can see, uh, I'm done with the oil change. Um, I actually, I actually was in the middle of doing the oil change and uh, I went to go film me pouring the oil into the engine and I poured it all over the engine because I was paying attention to the camera and not paying attention to what I was doing and I poured oil literally all over the engine. Like you know that commercial where the girl's just like, just pops her hood and she just starts pouring oil all over the engine because she didn't know where it went. That's literally what it looked like. It was awful. but. I cleaned it. I cleaned it up. Uh, I have since finished the oil change, um, and now I'm going to take my truck for a little bit of a test drive, make sure everything is good, 
but also I might be the only person that feels this way but I swear after you do an oil change and certain stuff every vehicle that I've ever done that on feels faster it's placebo I don't know all right sorry it wouldn't stay on the dash so this is how I'm gonna have to do it. I'm gonna have to hold it uh, taking a little test drive with it um, yeah I don't know why my, I say this to my dad all the time and he looks at me like I'm stupid but I swear whenever you uh, do an oil change or like change the air filter do an oil change all that jazz whatever car it's in no matter what it is it always feels faster so I always like to take it for a test drive anyway it's such a stupid thing to take a test drive after but I don't know it's just it's, I've just always done it so I just keep doing it so we're taking it for a little test drive it is a I haven't done a video on it but I've talked about it before it's a 2018 um, Ram 1500 the eco diesel uh, it's pretty sweet but I mean maybe we'll do like a full video on it if you guys are interested but just a quick test drive and then we'll be back at the house Blows your hair back, boys. Blows your hair back. Yeah. All right, we're back. Not in the garage, though. We're in the house. Um, kind of buttoning this video up now. Uh, it was boring, I'm sure. But uh, at least I got all that stuff taken care of in the garage. Now we're pretty much ready to go and work on the Rambler and get some other projects done, like the drill press and the vise and all that kind of stuff. Um, but now I kind of wanted to take a second to basically ask, like, if you guys have watched this far, great. Hopefully you have. But, um, yeah. So, I just basically want to know, like, what are you guys interested in seeing? So, like I said, I wanted to do those, the drill press restoration video. I want to do the vice restoration video. Obviously, I've got more uh, Rambler stuff that I want to get done. Um, I'd like to do some videos on the truck. Um, what do you guys think? Like, what do you guys want to see? Uh, I could do more welding videos. Um, I've learned a lot since uh, my last few videos on welding, um, not only from when I was in school, but from being in the industry for a little while. Uh, I learned quite a bit. So, uh, I mean, if you guys want to see some stuff like that, we could do that. Uh, I mean, I've got 3D printers and stuff, and I, I actually have some ideas for videos that I want to do uh, using a 3D printer to make like certain tools for fabrication. Um, I thought it'd be cool to make like a set of dimple dies and see how long they last uh, for dimple dyeing sheet steel and stuff like that. So uh, it'd be pretty cool to do some stuff like that. So like I'm, I'm down to do all that kind of stuff. Um, I'm even down to like review a couple of things. I like to go over tools and stuff like that. I'm kind of a tool nerd. So I like to, you know, see what kind of new tools are out there and, and that kind of stuff. And but yeah, so I'm basically just asking you guys like, are you interested in seeing the restoration videos? Uh, of like the drill press and the vice like obviously my most popular videos on my channel so far are of the rambler which is great um which I'm, i plan on doing a ton of more videos on cars and stuff like that since that's kind of like my main thing anyway but i just wanted to see if you guys would be interested in seeing anything else uh let me know uh drop me a comment um yeah, and we'll uh, we'll go over whatever you guys want to do. Um, follow me on Instagram. You can comment and DM me on there. You can message me on YouTube. You can comment uh, on the video. Let me know what you guys want to see. Um, remember, subscribe, like, all that jazz. Um, and we'll catch you on the next one. I think the next one you guys are going to like. We're going to get into the Rambler and see what's up. Uh, and we'll go from there. Yeah, remember, like, subscribe. Leave me a comment. I want to hear what you guys have to say. But uh, peace. I'll see you on the next one. Thanks. I appreciate it. Peace.